Hey guys, it's Marcus. And Dana. And we just wanted to take a few minutes to hop on and talk a little bit about what this fall is going to look like. Um, as I'm sure that you can understand, everything is looking very different. I'm currently in my very fancy... No, I'm in the sanctuary. We're recording in the sanctuary, or I am in the sanctuary anyway. Um, but we want to talk a little bit about what the, the fall is going to look like uh, this year. You know, when... Uh, I'll speak on behalf of myself. I think that when quarantine first happened, I had this illusion in my mind that, oh, well, we're just closing in-person worship until Palm Sunday, and then we'll be back. Or, oh, we're just closing in-person worship until March or May, and then we'll be back. Um, and yet here we find ourselves still in quarantine. Do you feel that way, Dana? Oh, yeah. I thought, okay, well, you know, like maybe a month or two, and, and then things will turn back to normal. And Yeah not expecting this five month and counting. <laughs> so over the summer, we had uh, five different plans, essentially of what the fall would look like. Just, and every time something would change, a plan would adjust. Uh, and finally, uh, we get, we have uh, guidelines as laid out by our regathering team. And so we started to think creatively about what will the fall look like. We listened to some of the feedback that you guys gave us through the survey we sent out in May. Um, and at this time, we really feel like trying to take youth group that was in person and just port it online doesn't necessarily work the way we want it to. Is that Not fair at all. Yes, that's very fair. It doesn't work at all. And so we wanted to think creatively about like, what could we do differently? How could we format differently? But also what are the conversations that we need to be having now? Um, I don't know about for you, but I know for me, uh, in my experience of church and my experience working on church is that so much time, energy, and effort is focused around uh, discipleship built through programming, right? That is this idea of uh, we're going to create a thing for people to show up to and participate in, and that's the primary driver of discipleship. What happens when you can't show up and attend the thing anymore? That's where we find ourselves. <clears throat> yes. And so uh, Dana and I started to have a conversation about what would be helpful for us to start talking about. And one of the things that we kind of landed on is as we're kind of having a, a time where we're reconsidering um, what our day-to-day -day lives look like, what our new rhythms look like, and including what our faith rhythms and what our discipleship looks like, I think it's helpful for us to have a, a conversation about what are the ways uh, that we can really start to practically apply our faith in our everyday life. And what does that look like? And one of the things that we, uh, so we decided to focus on is something called spiritual disciplines and spiritual disciplines are, uh, practices uh, that help prepare us and put us in a place in a mindset in order to, to be receptive to what God might be saying in our everyday lives. Uh, so the focus becomes less on what do we, ha what happens in, uh, Sunday morning worship or what happens in a Bible study and it really becomes more of a focus of what is this uh, what is this thing I believe and how is it impacting my everyday and what are the steps I can take in order to uh, to better equip myself to be listening for God and so um, we just we're using this this book on the back end it's called uh, Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster I have it right here you, you can see the a lovely book I'm about halfway through so. <laughs> is it the only book or the most perfect book about disciplines no, no. Uh, but it's a book that a lot of people um, might be familiar with if you've uh, if you've gone to seminary I don't know why anyone <laughs> so all of us so really? all of us yeah have, I mean I have four copies of it why don't you <laughs> I have one of your copies <laughs> um, and in it he outlines uh, 12 different spiritual disciplines or practices that um, we can begin to apply in our lives in order to, to kind of help form and shape us uh, in our relationship with God. Four of those he lays out as uh, inward disciplines, uh, things like prayer, things like fasting, um, things like meditation. He also lays out uh, four outward disciplines, things like service uh, or uh, submission. Uh, and then he lays out uh, four corporate disciplines, things like worship. Uh, things like confession uh, that also help to shape and form us, not only individually, but also our faith communities. Over the last year plus, uh, I think we started really looking at lectionary texts back in Advent of last year. Um, mm -hmm. We've been, do, we've been uh, looking at 
the daily lectionary readings or the lectionary readings for Sundays uh, guiding our worship experience. Um, and so <clears throat> we were talking to uh, the rest of the church and they really liked this idea. So this has now become a, a focus for the whole church. And it's something we're calling a year with God. And so um, we looked at our lectionary readings for the next year and we found that there were some uh, themes that were either within the lectionary text that we could pull up or met uh, aligned well with liturgical seasons uh, or traditional seasons that we find ourselves in uh, within our normal church rhythms that we could kind of do a deep dive on and highlight. And so each month we'll be going a little deeper on one of these spiritual disciplines. Uh, and one of the things that, uh, that Dana and I really want to kind of look at is what does this practically look like? Because um, even Richard Foster talks about it in his book where he says that um, the church has not done a very good job of teaching spiritual disciplines because actually there's not a lot mentioned of spiritual disciplines in the Bible. And it's because uh, to give great detail or instruction on how to apply these spiritual disciplines um, would have sounded foreign to the people, to the original intended audience of some of these scripture writings because they already knew how to do it. They had other things that were teaching them. They didn't have to learn from scripture readings how to enter into or to break a fast. Um, and so no one even thought to, to kind of write in some of those things. Um, so we're going to kind of ask that question of uh, this past month, we've been talking about prayer within mm -hmm. worship. Um, what does prayer in my own faith experience look like? What does it look like in a day to day basis? Um, I'm really excited because on Monday I have an opportunity to talk to a monk uh, from Mebkin Abbey, and I'm really excited about that. So, um, and we'll, I'll get a chance to interview him and talk a little bit more about uh, his own experience with prayer, some practical steps for, um, you know, what happens with prayer and how can we ap apply prayer in our own daily lives, <clears throat> uh, and kind of walking through different experiences of prayer. If you have a question that you'd like for me to ask a monk, uh, let oh, me know. What a cool idea to get to ask a monk. I like that. Awesome. Ask a monk a question about prayer. I'm going to have to think on that now. I'm going to come yeah. up with questions. <laughs> um, so uh, you can either you know email me or um, drop a link or comment on wherever this video gets posted and shared. Um, I'm interviewing him Monday afternoon, so there's kind of a quick turnaround on that. But if you have a burning question to ask a monk, I'd love to know it. Think fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that we want to talk about um, and, a, and a tool in order to help you uh, begin to, to look at these spiritual disciplines and apply them in your own life, um, it's a supplemental tool for, for what we'll be talking about, but it's these spiritual discipline boxes uh, that we'll be creating. Dana, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So I've been really um, focused on trying to come up with ideas of what we could put in these boxes uh, because Honestly, um, I'm really excited about this whole year with God because uh, as much as anybody else in the church, I, I need these, uh, these how-tos and these reminders of why things are important and how to do them. And um, so what I've been doing is I've been reading from Celebration of Discipline. Uh, I've been reading his chapters on the... Um, on each of the spiritual disciplines and using that kind of as a jumping off point of what do I think that uh, our youth need to, uh, to be able to practice those disciplines and how can we make it easier for you and, uh, and give you tools and sometimes even physical objects or, or books, uh, different resources uh, that make it uh, come to life for you. Uh, make it easier and make it easier to understand. And so um, I've been uh, really working hard trying to pull some of these resources. I'm really excited. I kind of, I hate that we, um, that we didn't get a chance to do prayer because there would have been a real, some really cool stuff to go with prayer too. But hopefully uh, some of you are taking the prayer challenge. Um, if not, you can, um, you can still sign up for it. I think. Um, and even if you don't sign up for it, you can just start it on your own. Um, but the hope is, is that each um, each month there will be a challenge of some sort that we'll be able to share with you uh, that will help you to practice and that you'll be able to join a group where you can have some accountability, uh, whether that's your um, whether it's a different group 
that's that's formed just for that or your small group that you guys can kind of practice it together and, and hold each other accountable. Um, first up in September is worship. And um, we've got some really cool things. I'm really excited about how that box is coming together. Um, but like with, so with worship, well, normally when we think of worship, we think of going to church on Sunday morning and that's what worship is. And that's what I, another thing that I love about this uh, year with God and being able to do these boxes is to be able to talk about the fact that worship is not just going to church on Sunday morning, listening to the pastor, singing songs. And, and then that's it, that worship is really uh, a way of life. And that if we're doing it correctly, if we're doing it right, then worship is everything we do. And so then how do we, uh, how do we put that into practice? And how, and especially you guys, like how, what are some tools that we could give you to help you uh, understand what that looks like and uh, to change the way you think about worship and that it's not just this thing that you do once a week, that is actually a way that you live. So that's the kind of things. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to give away, like, like I could talk about what's in the box, but I don't want to give it away yet. But, um, but I will. Okay. So one thing that I'm really excited about is that we're going to come up with um, little um, static cling, like mirror stickers every month that will have either a verse or some kind of saying, something that you can put on your mirror so that every day you see it and it reminds you of, of what you need to be thinking about for that month. But other than that, I'm not going to tell you anything. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're pretty excited about it. We think it can be um, a really neat opportunity to go a little bit deeper. Um, the deadline to sign up in order to get a September box is the 20th of August. Uh, so it's coming up pretty quick. You can head to our uh, website or we've also been communicating it in our newsletter. But you can go to the website apexumc.org slash YM <clears throat> and find it on there. Um, we'll also put it in the, the description of wherever this video uh, gets posted. So a little more information about that is the boxes will be um, $15 a piece if you do the whole semester. Uh, so that would be four boxes um, and that's $60. If you choose to do um, boxes individually, that's perfectly fine. Uh, those will be a little bit more expensive just because we want to be able to kind of know our numbers for ordering things. Um, so those, if you do them individually, it'll be $20 a piece. And, um, and you can order the semester right up until September 20th is when that will cut off. And if you want a box, if you want to do the boxes, but you're, you need some help financially, we can take care of that as well. So please don't let that be the reason that you don't join in on this. Yeah. So those boxes will get delivered every month. Or again, there are going to be a supplemental thing for what we're talking about. But this will be kind of our focus um, for the, the whole of the year. So um, what we'll do on Sunday nights, uh, what we'll do with, with what was Sunday night youth group and our small groups <clears throat> is Dan and I will also be creating some teaching content, um, short form teaching content that, that will then get used in discussion groups uh, within those small groups that happen on Sunday night. And all of that teaching and that discussion will center around whatever our spiritual discipline is uh, for the month. Um, we got really excited about worship uh, being in September because one of the lectionary texts uh, comes from Psalm 149, verse 5. And in the NRSV, it says, uh, let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Uh, and in this <laughs> season where we can't be anywhere else but our homes, that felt very fitting. And so I love that we're ready to talk about that and we get to use that uh, passage within worship. I feel like that needs to be a t-shirt, but <laughs> um, the boxes that we're looking at for this, uh, the spiritual disciplines we're looking at for this uh, fall include uh, worship in September. In October, uh, we'll talk about simplicity, um, which would be a really interesting and challenging one uh, to do. Uh, November, we'll be talking about the spiritual discipline of submission uh, and what exactly that means. I think, uh, Oftentimes we have a certain connotation of what submission means. Um, and so we'll be, we'll be kind of diving deeper into that. And then uh, December and Advent uh, is a perfect time for us to talk about meditation uh, because Advent is all about this season of, of, of hope and waiting. Uh, we often think of it as Christmas, this big time of celebration and uh, excitement, but actually the majority of Advent is that it's that lead up to uh, Christmas. It's that 
uh, hope and anticipation, that that kind of angsty waiting. And when we were uh, looking at that and, and thinking about meditation, when you first start out with meditating, the first thing you're kind of focused on is the clock and like, when is this over? And you're constantly like rubbing up against that tension of like, I can't wait for this to be done. Um, or at least that's my experience. Yeah, yeah. How much so longer do I have to be quiet? <laughs> Uh, so we're excited to look at that. <clears throat> um, and then we'll um, roll out uh, the new uh, sign up and everything towards the end of the semester for you to sign up for the spring semester as well. And we'll announce those uh, those focuses and months uh, then. One other thing that we'll do uh, that Dan and I have been talking about is uh, towards the end of the month, we want to create an opportunity uh, for parents to be able to come together and us just have a brief conversation. Hey, what did this look like for you guys and your family? How do you apply this? How do you teach this to your own kids? Because uh, now more than ever, perhaps, um, mm. it's really important uh, the role that parents play within their child's spiritual development. Um, we already knew that from a bunch of studies uh, that show that parents are the most influential person in their child's life. Uh, but even now when uh, the, the church is not physically open uh, for us to meet in person, uh, that becomes even more so apparent as we're, we're stuck with our families even more. Stuck with, I mean, get to spend time with. Yeah, yes. Our families yeah. Even Blessed more. with extra time. There we go. Yes. <laughs> um, so we'll have a call uh, for parents, and it's just an opportunity for us to kind of touch base, see how we're all doing. We're all trying to figure this out together. Um, we're all struggling. We all have the same anxiety and the, the same uncertainness about uh, maybe the decisions that, that stand in front of us. I know that there was a lot of um, anxiety around school starting, which start on Monday. And, you know, do I sign my kid up for virtual academy? Do I sign my kid up for plan B? Um, and uh, <clears throat> I don't have a, a middle schooler or a high schooler, but I have a three-year-old that was looking at preschool. Uh, and just the, the decision of whether or not to send her to preschool or not. Um, I can't imagine that amplified when your kid has already been in school for a number of years. And so I know that that, that was not an easy decision, but you were not in this alone. The great thing about church is that we are a community that are here to support each other, to affirm one another, to, to build each other up. And so uh, that'll be a call at the end of the month uh, where we'll just kind of, it's a, a check-in. We're calling it a parent check-in. It's an opportunity for us to talk about um, spiritual discipline, but also just how are things going uh, given the current season of life that we're all living and experiencing together. And then um, we'll give you a, a heads up on uh, some key resources that we'll be using looking at the next month. If you kind of want to follow along and be uh, learning more about how uh, you might incorporate these own spiritual disciplines into your family's regular rhythms uh, in life. So is there anything else we want to highlight, Dana? I think that covers it. Just, um, so we're really we're really focusing on in this season, um, as as Marcus said, that we want to partner with parents and we want to support parents and enable them to have the the resources and the confidence uh, that they need uh, to do their job well um, and to make sure that that parents you guys remember that we're here for you. Uh, you're not in this alone. Uh, and to connect those, those calls will connect you with other parents, but you can also connect with the small group leaders. You can connect with me and Marcus, um, uh, that we're all just trying to figure this out together as we go. None of us have the answers, uh, which I guess in some ways is comforting and in other ways, very scary, but we're all, we're all just kind of go getting through this together. And so we, we want to make sure that we're taking care of our youth, but we're also, I'm going to try and focus on our parents as well. Yeah. So thank you guys for, for tuning in, for giving us a little bit of your time to watch this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns uh, about the fall, I know that there's a lot of information being thrown out there uh, right now, especially with the regathering guidelines coming out and uh, the announcement about worship through the end of the year. And now youth group and children ministry all starting up. There's a lot to juggle. Uh, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, and let us know if there's anything that we can do to, to help or to clarify any questions that you may have. Dana muted her mic. All right. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Just say goodbye. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Brian came in and asked me a question. So. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you guys again for watching uh, today.